Okay, so today we'll talk about infographics design. Basically, it's a little bit of a more entertaining lecture, but it will actually teach you a lot about like very practical kind of things, like how you actually present information in a, <clears throat> in a way that's entertaining at the same time, you know, informative. So basically, what's infographics? Okay, so infographics is basically it basically has information and graphics at the same time. So it's supposed to be graphics, something supposed to be entertaining and, uh, you know, and, and pleasant to look at, right? And information is a message that you want people to get out of, of, of this graphics, right? And usually graphics is just entertainment, but here it's actually informational graphics, right? You actually want people to get something out of this. So, okay, so basically this is designed to commit to basically con convey something quickly and clearly, okay, quickly and clearly for everybody, the mainstream user, not just some experts, like everyone should understand this. So when you go Facebook and Instagram and then whoever that is, Twitter, you oftentimes see so in magazines, even New York Times, you often see these kind of things, infographics. And today I'm gonna tell you a little bit more how to design them effectively, okay? There's some ground rules. They're not very difficult, actually. You know, they don't really need to be a graphics artist to make really to make very basic infographics of course there's very beautiful infographics where you have to have to have a little more imagination but I'll, I'll tell you about this so basically in group cognition utilize graphics to enhance to see the human to sense the human to see patterns and trends okay so these there's some basic design rules that I want to tell you about okay the this graphical displays they should number one show the data of course number two include the Induce the viewer to think about the substance. Okay, you're supposed to think about the data, the substance of the data, the message that you want to convey with this infographics. You don't want them to think about the methodology, how you made the infographics, and so on, right? You want you don't want to do that, but you don't want to go overboard with the design, right? You want to keep it like at sort of a some level of, of interest, but don't like overdo it, right? That it looks like a painting now, right? Where you just look at the painting and no longer the data that that they're supposed to be understood, right? So keep it, and you'll see some examples of it that very subtle, interesting, intelligent, smart ways to, to bring a little bit of a thematic information into the graphics that people sort of cling to it and then and, and kind of hang on to it and, and, and remember what the, what the data was all about. It's very, there's very smart ways, avoid distorting, of course. You know, there's a big temptation that you may distort the data by using these infographics, but Data should be clear. You shouldn't distort the data, okay? So integrate the data into an infographic, but don't distort it, okay? Present many numbers in a small space. Make large data sets coherent. You know, that's what you want. Encourage the eye to compare different pieces of data. So they're used, oftentimes these infographics invite you to compare, you know, like something with something else, you know, or, or assess so you can sort of Think about the relations of, of, of certain different kind of things that you're going to see. Then reveal the data at several levels of detail. From a broad overview, define structure. So let people to really zoom in and understand how things work at different levels. Then serve a reasonably clear purpose. You know, of course, you shouldn't have the sh user, the viewer shouldn't be frustrated from looking at it, right? It should fall out what's you know, you, you should read it, of course, spend some effort, but you know, you shouldn't be making a riddle or a puzzle, right? It should be obvious, right? Unless you, that's your intent to make it, make it puzzling, but you know, that's a different story, right? Closely interest, integrate with statistical verbal description of the data, right? So, you know, that you shouldn't distort the data again and then make it, you know, keep basically keep the verbal description that maybe came, try to relate them in the graphical way. Okay, so this is like this one, example that we've talked about a few times before like Minar's 1869 map of Napoleon's campaign to Russia right there. Napoleon started here in Paris and these are the troops going to Moscow and coming back right that you know this this tan kind of region is the groups as they diminish over over the distance and then they in Moscow they're coming back and you can sort of see as they did that they diminish even more in the end only very few people came back Napoleon included, okay? So, and then, you know, so this is basically what they say, one of the first infographics ever made, right? Ever made, right? So six variables, 
in a two-dimensional visualization, right? Number of groups, the temperature is here, you know, on the bottom. Distance traveled, kind of see this like by, you know, by looking from left to right. The direction, east, and latitude, long, longitude sort of come, and the dates too, right? So they're basically these six, very, and it's a nice, very, very, just a few colors, right? Just white, black, and tan, right? That's all you need, right? So it's very, not, not very hard to, you know, you know, remember the seven colors, five to seven colors that I told you, these are only three, you know, only three, and a very nice way of using space. Okay, so it's all you have, like a canvas, plain colors, no shadows, nothing, right? Just plain colors, and, and basically that's what you get. So let's all some more random examples here. Okay, um, so some more random. So give you some, I give you some, I found some infographics that I thought were interesting to see. For example, this one here, supposed to be the time we spent on the internet, okay? You know, it was, it's very nicely shown. I, I told you, right, it's make subtle use of graphics. So the time we spent on the internet, this is just the human head and the eye, right, that looks out. There's emails and it says 200 emails per, per minute, right? So there's these little emails here, stylus as envelopes, the eye at the screen, there's the screen here, and behind the screen is this happy worker, looks at the screen, little bland here on the table and the way office setting, wireless symbol to indicate 20 hours online per week, right? And, and you know, and then basically, and then at most, at most five billion, what is it, most five billion, uh, can't read this. So, any case, you know, this is sort of really nice use of graphics. The email stylized as envelopes, then the human eye, the head, then this the screen here, and then behind it you see a small repetition. Worker sitting here, numbers are plotted big time, big in big fonts. Another number, big fonts. The header is here. Okay. Then below it is the stress in the workplace and you see different pie charts. Okay, so 70% of workers, American workers experience stress-related injuries, so 70%. 34% think they burn out in a job in the next two years. 33% more heart attacks occurring on Monday morning. 45% of entrepreneurs said they were stressed, right? Again, these pie charts, just two colors, right? Red and black, red and black, red and black, right? And you can quickly see like, you know, you can quickly make out like how much is the percentage, right? The pie chart is perfect for percentages, right? So that's why you want to use a pie chart, right? And below here, there are this, there's this, and there's this clock, right? When you see a clock, you immediately know, you know, it's gotta be about time, right? And that's basically exactly about time. So you find this clock, you know, stylized clock, you know, and then you'll find time, right? And then you get 168 hours a week and then 50 hours, it's the average work week, but if you, because you have these mobile devices, it's actually 70, 70 hours. It's a little bigger than this, right? And then this, the average commute time is 47 minutes per round trip, right? So it typically tells you sort of what your work week does. And here, regular work thing is 50 hours, and here is 70 hours because you're always accessible, right? So it's a nice infographics that you just read and learn about everything that's related to work, right? And, you know, that's, it's a pretty nice, intelligent way to look at these kind of things. So another one is this one. This is actually all very interesting. This is a resume by someone named Matthew McNew, right? It's very, it's an infographic style resume. And, and you know, it, it shows the telephone number here and this bar that says resume here and it says the education. It has a bubble chart, like computer science is the major. And then he also knows mathematics and electrical engineering, shows the GPA. And when he graduated, then the skills, the, mo the most dominant skills are in green, you know, and then the lesser skills are like here, the, these are Ruby, Java, C++, then HTML, JavaScript, C, PHP, SQL, and, 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 and Perl, you know, is down here, right? So you can sort of see what is the strength and what is the stuff he knows as much. And here's even a, 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 a scale, right? So this is like decent, Great, right? So Ruby is great, Java is great, C++ is great, and then he even colored it, right, in different colors, like the the the, 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 yellow, the height, the light blue one is like stuff he's decent, and the green stuff is stuff he's really good at, right? So color coded 
in terms of the, the level he has, right? And here, Windows, Linux, and so on. And then here is, the, here is his career line, right? And then he has, now he goes to Colorado School of Mines, right? And from, from high school all the way up to here. And here are some internships. So on the, on the right side, he, here is school work, and the left side is more like the professional work that he's done, right? So it's nicely cool. It's like a nice, interesting, on the bottom here are the number of jobs worked and the number of internship he has. It's nice stylized, right? This arrow here is like internship, like put, pulls you forward, right? So he has this arrow, right? So every, every internship has given him a little more, you know, experience in practical, practical, in practical things that are needed for the job, right? So this is really nice eye-catching resume, very different from the normal resume you get, right? So, of course, there is one downside with this resume that it's no longer machine readable. Many of the resumes are actually read by machines. You know, but this one is harder to read by machine, right? So this is like a down, like a practical downside that I want to tell you about, right? But if this resume lands on someone's desk, yeah, this is if you and if you apply like to a job like business analyst or or visual scientist or visual data mining or something like this you'll definitely get the attention, right? Because it's already very imaginative, you know, so that's pretty nice. So here's another one. What are we eating? What the average American consume, consumes in a year? So, you know, it's like basically, a, you know, this is the a radio chart here, a donut chart, <laughs> which, which is interesting because it's a donut chart because it's something to eat, right? The donut chart. So it's actually, you know, it's a subtle, a subtle kind of thing, you know, and then you can see here, you know, fruit, big percentage of fruit, and then chip, what is this, um, fats, and the red meat, and poultry, and then dairy products is a massive thing. And it's colored right, right, because dairy products are usually white, right, and then the red meat is red, chicken is not as red, and then eggs and cheese are this cheese color, right, and fish is, 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 is purple, right, and vegetables is green, you know, so the color, Choices are already matching, you know, and here's the coffee, which is brown, like coffee, you know, and then here is the average American, some statistics about the average American is the man and the woman, right? Typical icon for man and woman, then the height, it's like usually the average height of a man is usually a little bit more than a woman's height, right? Weight is there, right? And, and, and so on, right? And then, so, so this is really nice, right? Because the color is chosen according to the element it's supposed to be representing, right? And then there's a donut chart, which is interesting because it's a donut, because it's something to eat. And here's the, the, here's the information in the middle, which is because it's about the average, average American uh, diet, right? So it's a very smart way and eye-catching way because these icons are used, you know, it's a very eye-catching way to get information out, right? So it takes a little bit of imagination to make it, but Imagination, now I told you a little more about the, what, how to choose the colors, right? And how, what to use for, for icons, right? Find some icons, find the right colors that go with the theme, you know, find a way to represent it. You know, usually it's good because, you know, it's because of percentages and I told you percentages are always good, you know, in, in like a radial display, pie chart kind of display, which the donut chart is nice because you can put something in the middle, right? You don't really need a whole pie chart pie would be good too because also something to eat but but you know you don't need the whole pie chart because you 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 don't really need all that area for all this information right you can you can just put this in a ring around you don't need the interior and then you can use the interior for something else right that that makes that is sort of what it's all about right the theme that's all about so it's you know so you need some time to spend spend on it but but once you spend the time you can create something really nice and something that is really you know goes around, right? Uh, you know, the people which actually will forward it and, 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 you know, retweet it or do whatever, right? And reuse it, right? So another one is this one here. This is education around the world. Oh, this feels really nice because it really makes nice ways of these pictograms, you know, the one in five, like you make one blue, which is the one in five, you know, 15 to 24 year old has not completed primary school and lacks skills for it, right? Three in 10, three, the same color, use the same color here, then for the three people that you have, and there's 10 in total, right? The other ones are white, okay? 
in some emerging economies, three in 10 youth cannot base, do a basic arithmetic. And then you use this icon here, right? This arithmetic icon and uh, this calculator here to sort of connect the reader of this graphics with the actual domain, right? So it's about arithmetic. So, you know, so you have this three in 10. So you don't even have to read the text really, right? Three in 10 about is probably about arithmetic, okay? And then 1250, um, million children not able to read or write, right? So you have this book, but you cross it out and you have this pencil, you cross it out, it's basically 250 million, you know, can't read or write, right? And then here you label the, the, the areas here, you know, the, 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 like the children leaving school before completing a primary education, most of them in Africa and then you know, here in South and West Africa and Asia, right? So you'll, you'll see quickly, See, see where these people are, right? And it's also nice, right? So you can really, and it's sort of, this is like a bar chart, and this is sort of an infographics where you sort of put information seemingly random around on a sheet, right? You know, here this is also very, very nice. Some developing countries, one on the bottom left, one quarter to one half of youth who have graduated from primary school cannot read a, sing, cannot read a single sentence. You have this, you know, quarter here, or to half, and you have this, you know, book, this icon with a person in book and a question mark in it, right? So it's also very intelligent, very minimalistic, right? That the keys make it minimalistic, graphically minimalistic, right? Don't have like beautiful three-dimensional graphics, doesn't need that, right? Keep it plain because you're so, the reader is supposed to look at information and not be dazzled by the graphics that you have used, right? That's the key, right? Don't make the graphics too elaborate, Make it stylized, abstract things, just keep the minimum that you need to, to bring your point across and focus on the data, right? So that's the key, right? Don't, don't create amazing computer game like, you know, highlights and shadows and whatever. And this will completely distract from the data, right? Keep, keep it very simple and illustrative, just like this, right? It's actually really, really nicely done. Another one is here, student bullying. Okay, that's also very cool. You know, so it's like the bullying, of course, that's like the theme of it. So when people don't know what bullying maybe is, you know, who knows, right? Some people may not know. So you have clearly showed us this, 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 you know, this little cartoon of a bully, right? The bully is beating this guy up. So this guy gives him this thing. I don't know what that is. So, you know, and, and, you know, so then here it's like written some numbers, 280,000. Students are physically attacked, you know, and these are the states with bullying laws and the, and the states without the bullying laws are up here, North, North Dakota, Montana don't have, have bullying laws. And then, and, 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 you know, you know, this is the first state with bullying law is Georgia, right? And, and yes, Georgia. And then, you know, 106 students miss school each day from beer, fear of bullying, being bullied. 77% of students are bullied mentally, verbally, or physically cyberbullying statistics are rapidly approaching similar numbers. 43% fear harassment in the bathroom at school, right? So this is a major numbers, right? If you think about it. most common types of bullying are here. You know, every seven minutes a child is bullied and it's actually on the schoolyard and not, not an Aveda school. Some nice pictograms again, like, you know, one in five is this one here, I admit to being bullied or, or doing some bullying, one in five, and then here, um, one out of four students will be abused by another another youth, right? So this is the states, first states. First, first states to live in for bullying. Okay, <laughs> welcome, welcome to New York, okay, Pennsylvania. You know, so, you know, okay. So I don't hope you don't, you're not getting bullied, okay? So this is more, you know, maybe, I hope, hopefully not. So anyway, this is a, this is a nice little entertaining kind of, single canvas, right? Nice graphics, you can look around, let your eye wander, like effects are not really totally organized, right? But it's, it's, it's a pretty nice thing and you can really learn about bullying. You can get some geographical information, some numbers out of it, you know, where it appears, what it actually is, you know, so everything is really there, right? So it's a nice infographics, okay? So let's talk about a little more about how to actually make effective infographics, okay? How you, it's actually, everyone really can make this. It's not, there's a, you don't have to make elaborate kind of cartoons, although you can, you know, this is feasible for, by everybody. This kind of stuff is feasible by everybody, okay? Everybody, 
you can make this too. You can just find icons for this from on Google, right? Easy to do, right? This one you can make easily. This one is a little harder because you actually have to draw like this sort of graphics, right? But you can find these envelopes. You can find the clock easily on Google, right? This just just type in silhouette and and the term, and then you can find it. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a demo later on, right? So basically, what you want to do is these are the these are the recipes in which you which you should be using to make a good infographics. Okay, so first figure out what is the goal. Okay, what is the goal of your infographic? You know, that's the number one thing. And then collect the data because you need data to put in the infographic, right? So that's the thing you have to find. And then visualize the data for your infographic. Okay, so you, now you find the right way to visualize the data in in the way what you want to show, right? Is it like one of five? Use a pictogram. Is it if you want to compare something, use something else. I'll I'll show you in a second, right? Find the goal. I write that. Don't write this here. Find a goal, and then design a little tiny infographic piece. You know that will visualize the data in the way you want, but in the, give the message the way you want to do. Lay out the infographic using infographic template, which I give, which I show you, and then add style to it, okay, style. So let's look at this, right? So basically, first you have to find the goal, okay? Number one, outline the goals, okay? So find the goal. So first, the first question you may have is, you know, what is your burning problem, okay? What is your burning problem? This is the main question, okay? So what is the message, what is the problem I want to show, right, to the user? In this case, it was, you know, the bullying, what people eat, here, education as a resume, right, and the online, you know, find that burning question, okay, find it, okay, and then a few supporting questions to sort of build some of the information, okay, this will guide you what kind of data pairings or what kind of data will you put in this infographic, you know, this will basically help you figure out the kind of stuff you're going to put, right? What they're going to put here, what am I going to put here? This, all these are things support, this support your, this sort of supporting question. And then some probing question, you know, some questions to provide insight, the, the why basically, right? So the, the supporting question is the what and which, this is what you want to put, like the facts, and the why is like some example, some, some interesting sort of, you know, some sort of interesting visualizations that can give you a little bit of insight about the domain that you try to see. Okay, so I have this one here that I found online, which I think is really cool. So the burning question basically, and many of you probably have this, I I know I have, I have this every once in a while, how to pair food and wine. Okay, like how do, what, what wine do you pick for particular food? And then, you know, th this is basically the burning question, like what is it, right? What is it? And then you just have to figure out, right? So you have food and wine, okay? So what kind of wines are there? And what kinds of food are there, right? So this is basically what is types and categories of wine and what kind of food is there, right? So this is a very in, very basic kind of question, of course. You know, you first you have to pair it, right? Because you pair it, you need to figure out what are the, the players, right? So the food player and the wine player. So now you have that, right? Now you have the food and wine players. And then what what works with what? The association. Okay, find the association between those, okay? So, and then probing question, why do things work better than others, right? Did I, you know, explain it, you know, not just what works, don't make it just a, make it like a lookup table, then people just follow it, right? Be more informative about it, because if you do this, the why, you know, I'm telling you, one, once you explain the why, you get, you get people to like, to like it much better because they think they learn something deeper out of this, right? I can just give you an example from like a conference that I've been to, for example, there was like a best paper award for the best paper that would be, there was like a workshop that I think there were 15 papers presented and the audience was asked secretly, everyone had to fill out a, 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 like a ballot and has to ask which you think was the best paper. And they were actually, two papers, there were many, 15, I told you 15 papers, and they were like, one paper had amazing results, just unbelievable results, but didn't explain anything, how the results were obtained, right? Just showed the results, a little bit of background, but not really, you, you walked out, you said, wow, you know, great results, but 
you know, I don't really know how they created, right? This was basically this one, right? And, the, and there was another paper that didn't have as good of results than the, than the first, the other one that I'm talking was just mentioned, but it really, really went to great pains to explain it, how it was almost like a tutorial, right? You would really learn, you, you, you look, you, this, this 10, 20 minutes or whatever, or 15 minutes that were for each paper, you follow, you learn, listen to the speaker and you thought, okay, today I think I learned something about this subject, you know, much more than the results, right? I learned how it works and I think I may be able to do something, you know, follow up on this, right? And guess who the won the best paper award? The paper that didn't have as good of results, gender, but it, it had by far, I remember this because I was counting the votes, so I remember it very well, that, that paper, there were two contenders, the one with the good results and the one that had the good explanation, the one with a good explanation had had probably a quarter more votes than the other one, right? And there were other ones that had votes too, but those were the dom dominant ones, right? So really enable people to figure out the why, right? To show them ex in some explanatory way why the why 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 what what I can learn from this. So I have this this little visualization here that infographic I found about that that food and wine. Okay, so. I found this here, right? So, so basically, here it tells you that the different kinds of foods, okay, meat and dairy and, and vegetable and uh, you know and so on, right? And 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 you would make little icons for each of these foods. So this is the red meat. This is the the pork. This is the chicken. This is the crab. You know, this is the this is the uh, different dairies and so on. Banana and tomato. And it would show you different vines, right? So basically now you have the pairing. Remember I told you pairings, right? You want to pair it, okay? So now you know, okay, wow, well, you know, cool, you know, it, it, this, 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 this red meat goes well with the, you know, the, the dark red wine, right? The, the, you know, and then this, this one, the fish goes with the white wine, right? And you can, you learn all this from looking at these, when the dots are bigger, then it goes better with it than when the dots are smaller or not existent, right? So this is basically a matrix that tells you exactly where wine to pick, you know, for what particular food. And it's nine, you know, there's these stylized icons with the different meats. And we can use, of course, you can definitely use them for your final project. You know, someone asked infographics look very appealing, visually, can we use them final project? Most certainly you are very welcome to do that. Actually, I'd love to for you to make use of this, right? Because I really think it's a powerful way to convey visualization, convey information to the general public, okay? And then entertaining too. It makes people look more at your data than if you just put the table. Very, very good question. So, okay, and here, what's very interesting here, you, you know, you may have a, a food that is based, that is, that is basically a dish, right? That is based on, on two different things, you know, that maybe there's like the vegetable, goes with a particular meat, right? And and then basically for this vegetable, you would use this kind of wine. And for this particular meat, you go with this kind of wine, right? And then the intersection is the wine you're actually going to choose, right? So you can learn something about, you know, oftentimes you just read in the, in the you know, you go on online and say, I want to make risotto with, with, with lamb meat, right? You know, then, you know, then the, what, what kind of wine should I choose, right? And then you maybe find an answer, use this kind of wine, right? But it don't, you don't know why that really is. And here it actually decomposes it and tells you, right? You know, um, I, I post these, I post these, oh, for this, I, someone asked if I can provide a link. Um, I will post all the slides online. So I don't know where this particular visualization came from. So I actually don't know. <laughs> I should probably know, but I don't know. Is it given somewhere? I think maybe on the bottom it's 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 given. I forget. So you know, so maybe there's a link on the bottom. I can't see it because my menu is over it. Um, so and here you can learn about like when you have three food, and here you can learn about when you have four foods, the different vines like this set operation. In the intersection is only a single vine that falls out, right? It's that one, right? This uh, can't read it, you know. Share share pairing, right? So this one. So the white wine comes out of this, right? Although it's dark, right? Anyway, but this is a very good visualization, right? It really help, help, really has this pairing that is very basic, right? The basic categories, the basic pairings. And then, and then 
and then here you can explanatory to figure out what it actually means, right? And you can, you know, you can use any, if you have another dish, you can just take them all, put them all together and then decide it, right? Design it. But what's, what is that bubble on vertical lines chart would be called a bubble matrix share. I don't know, it's a set operation. I don't know, it's a set, I think it's just a set operation. You know, I don't know what if there's any. It's just a it's just a set operation, in in, in you know in, in in circles of disks. So, okay. So, number two, collect the data. Okay. So we talked about how to collect the data. You know a lot about where to get data. You know, just <laughs> type in what you want to see and dot not data or whatever or find go to one of these sites. So we're not going to talk about how to collect the data. So again, now you have to now you have to you know. So number two, collect the data. Okay, what was step one? Now first we talked about the, you know, the, the goals, right? The goals, there you got the goals. Burning question, supporting question, probing question, you have this. Let's assume you don't have the infographic yet. When, oh, I'm sorry, a Venn diagram. It's a, yes, it's a Venn diagram. Okay, thank, thank you. It is, this is a Venn diagram. I have no idea why I didn't think of that. It's a Venn diagram, right? So collect the data, collect the discuss this, and then visual decide what your primary goal is, right? And then basically you can use this I core method, okay, which is basically inform, compare, change, organize, reveal relationship, and explore. Okay. So that's basically what you what you what you want to do, right? So there's, these are these really remember what we talked about when we talked about interaction, right? These are also the very interactive kind of things, right? To inform not but compare things and then change and organize, like show what changes, organize information, reveal relationships, allow people to explore, right? So these are this called this I core. This is like abbreviated as I core. And um, so inform, right? Inform was basically you know, try to put the, the important message in bold, colorful text, okay? You know, so here you have, you know, make a numerical stat stand out with large, bold, colorful text. So the brain makes 700 neural connections per second before age of five, right? So this is basically make the 700 big, right? So, of course, you need the user has to read, the viewer has to read everything, but the 700 stands out because that's the big number, right? That's the, because you're supposed to show numbers. So, you know, you wanna, you know, you could also, you could also put a little brain to the next, right? But then, then you really have to, you know, this is really what you wanna show, right? This is basically the, the info that, that, that the, 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 you know, the snippet that you wanna show, the information snippet you wanna show. Brain makes 700 neural connections per second, okay? Then you can pair icons with text, you know? So here you have this 4200, vaccines administered and then you have this syringe that administers the, the, the vaccine, right? So you make a little icon next to it, right? Yeah, so now, now you remember a little more, right? Okay, 4,200 vaccines, okay? And then here, percentage can be nicely shown with a, with a, with a pie chart or a number 25% or a pictogram, you know? These are not really 25, I should correct this. These are not 25%. There's like, you know, this are actually only you know, 18% or something like this. Okay, how many are these? Okay, then, so, so, you know, so basically make this pictogram where you highlight and you don't highlight, okay? Then, then this is a nice way to show proportions, right? You show everything and a few highlighted. That will show you, show you how many really are there, right? So in this case, it's actually not 25%, a little less. You should be highlighting these two. So there's a mistake. I didn't make that. I think I found this somewhere. So, anyway, then here this is the this is the this is the compar comparison show similarities or differences. You know, so bar chart is really good for comparison. Bubble charts are good. Bubble cloud is good. You know, bars just by length difference. You can quickly see what the differences are. Bubble charts you can see by 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 uh, you know area differences. You know, bubble cloud by numbers of circles, right? So you can see this here, right? So it's a nice way to show proportions and compare different, different uh, classes, right? You know, PI chart is like when you compare parts of a whole, donut chart, pictogram, tree map, 
these are all nice, pleasant things to look at, right? So white, it's just very simple, right? Different colors. And I'll show you and talk a little more about harmonic colors. You want to use colors that match together. Or you want to use a color that maybe is not matching, right? That will stand out because it's disharmonic, right? So there's different ways to, different, graph, different techniques you can use. We'll talk about harmonic color maps a little later. Then pictogram, again, PMAP. And then stacked chart basically compares categories and parts. So you have the categories, three different ones, and also the parts of it, right? This could be England, you know, England, Germany, and then South Africa, right? And these are basically the different, you know, rich, poor, and, 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 and medium, medium income people, right? And they sort of see that, right? And then stack bar chart is basically, this is just a horizontal, this is a column one. You can just, depending what you wanna, how you wanna organize it, you can make it either vertical or horizontal, you know, it doesn't matter, right? And then here, if you wanna show trends, like this is sort of like stack bar chart, like stack area chart. We talked about that before. Again, very simple colors, three colors, four colors, very simple, very stylized, not distracting from the main message, you know, just, just, you know, but still pleasant to look at, you know, that's the key, right? Then another one, show trends over space, that's the change part, right? Change, typical line chart or area charts are often used to show trends along a timeline, small multiples, they have different maps, and you can sort of see the chlor chlorpreth map, you know, how, how, how they change over time, right? How the population changes over space and time, right? This is just over space to show the change over space. And here to show the change over space and time, right? And this is just a timeline. Okay, so that's basically change, right? You know, either the small multiples display, or you know, or or line charts, depending on what you want to show, right? Basically, that's the way. And it's again pretty pretty basic stuff, right? Organize, show groups, patterns, rank or order, right? You can see, you know, lists is organizes things like a list organizes things and ranks it too right and then a table organizes even more right and then here bar chart column chart bubble chart pyramid they also organize things the flow chart organizes things you know so this is all sort of wrap put things together in a common frame if you want to show hierarchies you make a flow chart if you want to like show like a more of a multivariate display you use a table if you want to show rankings you use a list Right, and these are like, so, so I'm putting these slides together, you have a little bit of a lookup table, right? You can sort of, when you, depending on what you want to show, look at these, make a, you know, look at these slides and see what, what you want to, what kind of primitive you want to use, okay? Then relationship, relationship is, is you know, you know, here if you have two dimensional bivariate relationships, you can use a scatter plot and color it by the class. If you have a multi-series plot, like over time, you make, make a bar chart, or a, or, a, or a line chart, right? It's also, you know, very nice, very commonly understood, right? You know, here you can, you know, so that's basically the, the uh, relationship display. So add interaction, you can do this, but if you have online infographics, you can add interaction. If you just print out something, or if it's like on, you know, just on the social media, oftentimes not interactive, right? then you have to basically already have it prepared, right? But you can make it interactive. That's the E part, explore part, where you actually explore it and change it, okay? So, and then the layout is basically create a natural flow. You know, make the, use this question pyramid I showed you before, take, put the burning question into the header, and then put the charts underneath that support it, and then finish with the bowling questions, okay? So it's sort of how you lay it out, okay? So now I've really showed you all the steps, right? How you do it, find the burning question, then collect the data and then visualize the data, find ways to visualize. And here's these different tasks you can use to, to and, then exp and then allow exploration and then lay it out in a canvas, okay? Then, okay, then layout, you know, I wanna tell you a little bit about layouts that exist, okay? So, you know, there's grid layout, you know, there's like, one column layout, this is really red from top, but from top to bottom. There's the two column layout where you, people usually go left, right, and then sort of visually explore it like this in the form of a Z. 
three column, usually people explore it like left column, mid column, right column. Same thing with four column, you know, the fluke from left to right, because most, you know, in Western hemisphere, you usually lead from left to right, and most other cultures. Then this is the multi row, you usually read from top to bottom. This is, this is a direct section, then you bisection, then you use, then you use, um, three section then you use basically few, people usually look at the top and then they go left and right here and then like this right and then these sort of random things some of them more like this right first you look at the left column top bottom and then the right column top bottom so this i think i'm not sure how scientific these visual trans visual uh, browsing patterns really are but maybe they did it with eye tracking experiments they they, they found out how people traverse this. I have not, I'm, I'm not, can't say that I read all the papers that come out. It seems, it seems reasonable that probably some people have studied that, right, to see how most people traverse these kind of plots, right, in a Z, by the right above the bottom, and then the Z here. I think there are probably studies on this, right, that, that show that, right, that people usually, most people traverse information like this, you know. That's, that's, people also have explored, like, how to make a web page, right, what people, look more and what people look less, where to put the information stuff, in, important stuff on a web page. I'm sure they have used like some sort of eye tracking experiments to find out. So show you some examples, okay? So just a one column example, okay? Linear flow, top to bottom. This is like a typical production timeline. You know, this is like the, from the beginning to the end, like many plant truck goes out, right? And here, the how you make uh, ramen, right? You know, so it's like, it's sort of like, almost like an exploded chart, right? You can sort of see the different pieces that go in the ramen and then sort of, you know, and then they, when you let go of the gravitation, they all pop, they all go down into the bowl, into the bowl, right? Right now they're like floating in air and then you can sort of see the proportions of things, right? So what goes in there, you know, and then, you know, that's basically something you people will explore from top to bottom. Another one is this one. Two column, that's usually for, for comparisons. The UI and UX, user interface and user experience, right? And then you look at it and first people probably look like this. And then they look here. This is another comparison, two sides of a pie chart. Here's the people that eat the pizza and the, and the, the rims and then and the, 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 the crusts. And here people that don't eat the crusts, they leave it out, right? And those people apparently, they favor mustard, and those people favor the favor the favor the uh, the ketchup. I you know maybe because there's no ketchup at the at the crusts. I'm not sure. So anyway, I I, you know, I I did make that visualization. So anyway, so this is the two column way, right? You can compare the two different kinds of ways that people the two different strategies of either pizza or references for pizza. Who said what? Democrats and Republicans, bubbles show a little bit what, what the proportions are. So most Democrats talk about change, you know, and then most, most Republicans talk about God. I don't know why that is. <laughs> and tax, you know, they don't like tax and they like and that God. They, they don't talk a lot about God. Democrats talk, don't, apparently don't talk much about God and Republicans talk a lot more about God. But they don't talk a lot about Bush and jobs, apparently. And, uh, you know, the uh, Democrats talk more about jobs, right? It's like a bubble chart. So I, I did not make that, 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 that visualization here, okay? It's basically by text analysis of number of times the words were used, okay? So, you know, I don't, you know, back, back when Bush was, was, was getting, in, get, maybe when Bush was, uh, doesn't have a when Bush was getting elected. Then here's a three column example. People, you know, what we learned before, you go from left to right. So 2.64 billion people around the world do not have access to adequate sanitation. Then, then, then it comes 780 million people that have access to improved water sources and every dollar spent on water and sanitation generates at least four in increased productivity. So you can see the flow of the story, right? Clean water systems is the number one, right? Remember, we talked about this. This is how you browse these, first the top and then the, from left to right. And this design really uses this, right? First, clean water systems, okay? Let's talk, this is the theme of it, right? And there's a pay, a little picture behind it that, that tries to convey that it's about water, right? So there's water and the kids, 
you know, and the water and you want to, of course, kids are supposed to have clean water, right? So it's like shows you that, that it's about cleanliness. Then it talks about, the, you know, how many people don't have ad access to the adequate sanitation. Then use the clear water source. And then here, what do you get out of it? If for every dollar you spend on water and sanitation, you get four, four dollars, one, one to four ratio increased productivity, right? So this is based on a punchline, right? So this is the terrible, the terrible, terrible state of affairs. And then here's the punchline, what you can actually do if you provide more, right? So it's a nice infographics, right? That really has a message and really organizes information in terms of the way you, you know, read it, right? There's no graphics in here, just big world, big, big numbers, right? So I told you, make the numbers bigger to get, you know, that's usually the way to do it, right? Make the numbers big and then, then make people look at the number because people are always attracted to numbers and then explain it below it with a smaller text. Don't have everything at the same level of size. Otherwise people will get overwhelmed, right? So it's better to show a big number first and then let, let people, what is 6.4 million? Okay, and then they can hear every one dollar. Wow, you know, I want to read more about this, right? So really, really support the psychology of people, how the way, the way they read and the way they attack, the way when they get presented a picture the way they approach it, right? Don't overwhelm, show first level of detail and right? show first important stuff, then let people explore it, what's, what's in, inside, right? That's the good way to make infographics. Here's another one, visual act. This is basically the random access, multi-section layout, right? When you sort of put things all over, right? There's no real preference in which you can, you know, here's the, you know, the easiest, easiest indoor plants, you know, so, you know, you can look at any one of them, right? It doesn't really matter. There's no clear order to this. Here also working remotely, what is the advantages? There's no clear order to this. Everyone is an advantage, you know, save money and, you know, it's better for the planet and so on, right? So all of these, there's no particular order on this. That's why it looks like a bulletin board, right? Like a little bit, you know, just, just you know, pinned in such a way that it, that it fits on this, this canvas, right? multi-section, random access, random access information. So now comes add the style, okay? Now you've created this, okay? Some of these had already style. Let's say you have now laid, decided on the, the way to visualize it. You decided on, you decided on the way you laid out, done all this, okay? Now you need to jazz it up a little bit and make it visually, aesthetically pleasing, okay? To really make it nice looking, right? And also use, use this kind of layout, uh, use this kind of style, um, uh, the style to visually guide the consumption of this infographics, right? To really help people browse it, okay? They do, you know, sort of go get people to look here, then get them to look here and here, more than just the usual order in which they look at it, more like now emphasize different parts of it, you know, combine things in groups, you know, and then to separate things that are that are logically separate. So let me talk, let's talk about this, right? Minimize the text, you know, do not have a lot of text, like don't overwhelm people with a lot of text. That's the least thing people want to see, like text, right? They want to like see the, you know, they want to see the, they want to see the, the, the punchline and the real information, right? They don't actually want to read a lot, right? You know, this is good to read infographics, short paragraphs, okay? at sixth grade level. So you can take a piece of text actually, and, and I think Microsoft Word has a, has, a, has a way to, you can actually, there's a select, selection you can make that tells you what is the reading level of your text. I think Microsoft Word has that. And you can also get it online. You know, you, take, you can take text into this, into this, you know, select text and then, and then figure out if a six year old, if it's like at the six year old's capacity, right? No big words basically, you know, in complicated words. It's basically most of the, it's mostly the, the words that are in there. Then find, point, use font to point out importance, you know, readable font for the bulk of the text, amp up the size of the main, you know, the header and the section headers and data highlights, and make sure that the gist of your infographic is immediately apparent, right? To really show what it's all about, okay? Like, you know, that's basically the key. Then, so examples, some examples I found out, I found like online, so here's like reducing poverty and it sort of plain one, right? Nothing really stands out. You know, it's you, anything could be important. It's a red, you know, used like red color, 
but here it's really in your face, right? Reducing poverty is like a big thing. You know, that is what really important, right? And then the rest is not so important, right? Of course, it's also important, but not as important. It's basically the, 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 the look or right? The, the, the head that the, the makes the head turn, right? Now, now you got your attention, right? Reducing poverty, okay, what is it? And then this picture of this, this you know, person lying on the street with this banged up bus, right? This is also a gray, gray level, right? So it looks already very poor. It's impoverished of color, right? So it looks very poor already, right? So it's all very, you know, very, you know, very nicely done, right? It's like the play gray level and the scene of it, right? The banged up bus, right? Everything, everything calls like primitive and, 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 and low impoverished, right? And then you're reducing poverty and you're looking for the, then you can read the text and find out now, what is it, you know, what, maybe can I do something about it or what can I do? You know, you're interested now, you know, and then you read this text. It's inviting to the read the text. Then alignment, okay. So alignment is very important too because it organizes information and people like to have organization, right? Everyone wants to have knowledge organized in, 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 spoons right so we have one knowledge bite the next knowledge the next knowledge by by right? spoon feed the viewer one by one right don't you know so organize it in a nice organized fashion you know and then then you can read this one and then you read this one and this one and when you get tired you stop reading right so it's basically you don't have to decide where to read you just start in this box then you start and then go in this box and then the next box the next box right? and then you read more and then you know this is basically organizing you know highlight put you know this is this is much easier than this right because it all it's sort of like a big pool of things right and here you you emphasize it right you sort of what you do here you 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 package it right so here's a little bit of a facet read it and then you know if you get tired you don't read anymore right and then read one more and read one more right and then you you know may read all of them or maybe not you know but at least with, with every one of those you read you learn a little more, right? And you achieved, you as an information designer, you achieved something, right? That you made someone look and read it, okay? Here, basic shapes emphasize things, but also use, you know, use some color, right? And, and, and use some icons, right? So the blood, instead of just using the number five, you know, make, maybe make it a blood drop, you know, why not, right? Then it's basically a little more entertaining and a little more semantic, right? Five reasons. To give blood, you know, and it's blood, is, you know, and then here and here, you like make them stand out, like this is the numbers you want to show, right? Make them stand out a little bit, emphasize them, and here's the text, you know, emphasize the numbers because that's what that what stands out. That's what you want people to remember and learn about, right? You know, that you want to like highlight that, and then and then they can explain it because they may be interested. Three, what is this three about? Okay, I'm reading this. Two, okay, this is this, right? So guide the user in in looking at this information okay then use icons icons are always good but but take icons you know find the icons you know, there's lots of icons around right and they, there's libraries of icons you can find them everywhere and then but highlight them right don't just have this sort of plain looking thing make use of some color right you know, there's not that many color, okay, green, yellow, and then reddish, right? So it's not, but you know, and then people can use, you know, map them together, right? So, and then make them like, put them in boxes. Again, like here, right? Just to show, highlight a little bit, emphasize it, and then the same thing here, right? Makes it much more interesting to look at, and, and you can sort of remember it more, and, and it's more entertaining, right? This is like terrible, right? This is like just, this is an awful display, right? Because it's just information. And then here, at least you put some icons, but still very plain to look at. Here, you actually put some pop into it, right? It pops out, right? And you can see more, right? So this is really the bear, another rule of it, right? Basically use icons, but make them, make them stand out a little more, okay? Then here, what you really want to do is be diligent, okay? Don't, don't just, Put things in, 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 you know, randomly, okay, here, organize it, make it really align it, you know, here, look at the circles a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, you know, this is a little bit too far up, really be diligent and align it in a nice grid, okay, like align a grid so it looks organized, remember, organization is good because you package things up 
in, in different pieces, right? And you can really make people, you know, invite people to look at one at a time and then it looks, you know, it, it doesn't look like it's, you know, not, not, it doesn't look like you didn't put an effort, right? As an information designer, right? It's sort of, you know, we're gonna look at this and you can read this and then here, right? And uh, you know, it's, it's like a buffet, right? An information buffet, right? Here's like, your, you know, different, different kinds of foods, right? You can read them, you can put them on your plate or not, right? It's nicely organized, okay? It has these, line these these uh, radial radial bar bars on it right so it's dials on it it says shows you a little bit how much it is right so that's also very nice then then negative space that's also very interesting design um, primitive right negative white space often used in advertising this is a little more involved how to make it but some but I show you some 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 examples where it's really easy to make so it's basically a space around between the subject of an image as in, and helps to define the subject, okay? It helps emphasize a message. Here's a very famous one, the NBC peacock, right? Can you see the peacock, right? It pops out, right? It's just, it's a negative space. You know, it's the white that is, a, that is basically in there, right? There's no real peacock here. It's just created by this negative space, okay? Another one I found is this one, you know, Pittsburgh Zoo and, and Aquarium, right? You can see the monkey and the, 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 the tiger or lion, you know, in here in the, in the tree, right? Very smart. It, it really doesn't take much time to find it, right? You see the trees and very quickly you see these animals in it, in a negative space. It's just really cool, right? Very cool. You know, so people, when they look at your visualization, they, Oh, you know, negative space. It has a message, right? You can actually, it's a hidden message or a message. Here's another one, ice cream. Inside this, 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 here there's like the word ice cream is just created by these, by these pink letters, right? You know, just negative, right? Amazon logo, okay, has, has also a message, right? This, this, you know, smile that, that points somewhere, right? Yeah, it's a message, okay? So it helps Amazon a message. And you can, you can make a very primitive way to, 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 yes, someone mentioned the Amazon logo, exactly, right? That has a message too, right? Because there's the smile at the same time as I owe. So, you know, then here design, you know, when you design these things, this page bleed, you know, it's just really, you know, this is so much cleaner, right? This is so much cleaner by putting this border around it because, you know, it looks just better. It, it again packages things a little bit more, and and you know, it design thinking is sort of the over embracing thing that you really use the whole width of it. But for these boxes, put a little bit of negative space to sort of contain it in design thinking. Right, this white box is sort of a container for everything else. Right, it sort of contains it, and then builds like design thinking is overarching, and everything else is contained in it. Right, so that's a nice way of doing this. Then also gaps between unrelated elements, you know, instead of putting this, really separate the columns a little bit. So not to jam together. It's also a very simple, very simple design, you know, very simple. Just spend a little more width and, and make these make these gaps, right? Separate things so they don't become overwhelming, right? Really, really make so let the user really pick one column at a time and then compare it with the other column. So it's basically some people may not know what to do with these columns. Some people may not know that, that to think in columns and rows. Some people may not know that, right? So in this way, you really, really point it out, right? This is one thing, this is another thing, and this is the third thing, right? You really columnize it out, that really guide the user in exploring this, this space. Another one is here, you know, like separate the colors. Remember I told you there's this color bleeding across different colors, right? Color contrast, by putting a white border, between it, you avoid that, right? It's basically, you know, add a little white space between different colors when, the, when you can separate them to, to make, it, make them more pleasant to look at. But right? here, the eye, remember what I told you about the eye that there's different, you know, that there's like the wavelengths bend, require focus of the lens, different lengths, lens focus, right? And it may even hurt the eye even, like the eye goes back and forth. And it's very un unpleasant to look at, right? Because some colors also have such a different wavelength. By doing this here, you you know it's a little easier to look at, right? 
you know, so that's another nice little thing. Then highlight important information. You know, you can use some different color here, for example, red, you know, to highlight the product that you really want people to look at, right? Just use color for that, right? That's really simple design rule, right? You know, so you can also use color to group. That's also very simple design rule. Everyone can do this. Business strategy, marketing, customer service, productivity, right? So it's like clearly sends parcels out the information in a very interesting, in a very informative way, right? Like here, like, let's talk about marketing. Let's talk about customer service. Let's talk about productivity, right? Different things we're gonna talk about. And here it's sort of middle, middle muddled message, right? It doesn't really, you know, it's same thing. So, you know, you don't really focus. It doesn't help you to focus on the message at all, right? It's like one thing, then another, right? And it's like, you know, I don't really know. Here you can, you can prefer, you first to look at the brown, then at the, the turquoise, and then at the yellow, right? You can quickly see, right? It's like a nice guiding sort of, by simple concepts, right? I told you none of this is very hard, right? None of this is requires a lot of artistry, right? All of this can be easily done. Right, you know, it's just a way. But this is the world between these two, right? Really, the world between these two. This is this is really informational graphics, and this is this is just dilettante, right? This is this is someone who knows about design rules, and this is someone who knows nothing about design rules, right? This is this you you would pay someone to do make make this, right? This you can maybe do yourself. You would pay someone, but now I told you now you don't have to pay someone anymore. You can do it yourself, right? By using these very very basic rules. Okay, Nick, use these, these uh, neutrals, you know, instead of just having this kind of thing. For your resume, for example, you know, you use, use some, some, you know, neutrals to offset bright colors, right? You, you separate it very subtly. Don't use like, don't overuse color. Don't make it too colorful. Remember what I told you about saturated colors. Don't, don't, don't make it too colorful, otherwise it becomes overwhelming, right? Subtle color, right? So not a lot of color here, not a lot of color here, you know, not a lot of color here in this one, right? There's not a lot. This is actually, in my opinion, a little bit too much color. This is actually too overwhelming, in my opinion. This is kind of nice, you know, and then so on, right? So, you know, so there's, there's, you know, you have to maybe do some, you can ask some of your colleagues or friends or, or do a user study on Mechanical Turk to figure out what works best if it's really something very important, right? But anyway, so here. So here's some, in, some good color maps, color palettes, right, that you wanna use. But don't just use any color, right? I told you a little bit more about this, right? Some colors go better than others. You know, these are nice harmonic colors. So there's these color maps that you can use, you know, or color palettes that you can use that have different name, brilliant blues and then Baroque luxury, gracefully modern and sunny and warm and elastic. So these colors have been, you know, you can find those palettes everywhere. Like on the internet, you can find them and you can use the color brewer, you know, that, that basically, and, and Microsoft PowerPoint and all these other, uh, Illustrator has all these color palettes too, right? And then, you know, basically these colors are shown to work well together and to commit a certain, certain message, right? So this is like, you know, sunny and warm, right? It's like when you have a, you know, the California kind of look, right? Elastic and trustworthy, you know, it's more, more, you know, more conservative kind of look, right? And here, brilliant blues, right? This is more art artistic looking. This is luxurious looking, you know. So, so there's different color palettes that that create a different ambience to your information visualization, right? So, you know, if you, it depends what kind of person you want to be or what kind of what kind of message you want to convey, right? Do you want to convey a message that's sunny and warm or do you want a more uh, a message that is more conservative, right? You would use the right color pal palette for that, right? That you can, you can use these labels, right? You know, you can, you can type into internet like conservative color palette and you're going to find the, those kind of examples, right? I just found these. Okay, then here color palettes, color, uh, color temp these, these infographics palettes, there's actually templates, there's a lot of them on the web, right? You can actually find them. Vengage, the company that I got some of these, um, like vengage.com, right? You can go to this web page, they have them. Uh, there's actually ones that are free and some ones are not free. Well, there's lots of templates already on the web you can use, you know, you, don't, you can modify them. 
or, or you can create your own, right? The duty, this is really not that hard to make, right? And this seems to be a very simple template, right? This is also a very simple template. Many of them are not hard, right? They're just for people that don't know the rules. But now you know the rules, I told you, right? So, you know, you can just make your own template, right? But there are templates on the web, okay? And so last thing I want to talk about, if there are any questions, please, please, please be free to ask them on the chat window. And otherwise, I'll just keep going. Um, what I'm going to talk about is color harmony, okay? So I, these templates, of course, that I showed here, they're all proven to be harmonic. But what does it really mean to be have a harmonic color color uh, map, right? So this is a, something we did on in our lab a long time ago, probably more than 10 years ago, a volume rendered image that 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 basically you know uses different color 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 uh, mapping okay so this is this frog with some some ana some anatomy around it okay this is using a non harmonic color mapping and this is using a harmonic color mapping so what is it right it really really only matters that the, the histogram of the colors around the color wheel really 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 make determine if something's harmonic or not so user studies have shown these different harmonic color schemes okay so these are long user studies, are very well known. This is the I type, B type, L type, and so on, right? And they really matter like in terms of the angle and how many of these there are. You can take this anywhere you want, right? It doesn't have to be purple. You can, whenever this angle, basically this angle is crucial, but you can rotate this anywhere you like. The B type is a little broader. L type is the slim one and the bigger one. I type, L type is the one opposing. T type is the whole one, whole half of it. Y type is a little a section here and then the small section here, the opposing. X type, similar section, opposing. N type, nothing. <laughs> so no type. But you can you can rotate all of these. What matters really is just the association. Okay. Whenever your colors fall into this into this kind of range, then they're 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 meant to be they're considered harmonic. Right? They are. You know, you can use another color addition. Then what that means basically, you you create a disharmonic coloring colorization, which maybe you want to you know create the tension in your picture, right? To make this red here, well, then that basically, you know, remember what I told you: blue and red don't go well together when they're mixed, because the eye has to you know has to work very hard to focus on both detail. That's why it's not there, right? But but if you want. To create some disharmonic disharmony, right? To out to point out some some interesting some interesting sort of um, highlight your your visualization that you want people someone to look at, you know. Then you then you go then you can do this. Can you show how the frog photo is not harmonic using the color job? Yes, you can, right? So when you look at this, this is the typical half, which is this guy here, right? Where is it here? This is the T type. And this one here is pretty much all over the place, right? There's like something here, something here, something here. You will not find any color plate that has color, color template that has this, okay? There's basically, you know, you have like, you know, you cannot find anything that has this kind of, this, 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 this has something here, something here, in addition, something here, right? You cannot find this, right? So, so there is no color, there's no color template that has this. So what is it exactly? Okay, so basically, you know, this light blue probably shouldn't be there. You know, the light blue is really disharmonic, right? The light blue really disturbs everything else. And I actually, indeed, I just, I replaced it with this sort of pink, right? And, and, and here, also this green here doesn't really look good with it, right? And I replaced it with, with yellow, right? So this, this, I mean, when you really look at it, it does look a little, it does look disharmonic. It looks artificial, right? It looks artificial. It, and it looks like some child drew with crayons, and then here it looks more like more more eloquent, more more um, you know what can I say more you know more eloquent, right? More harmonic, right? Because things sort of match well. They look you know it looks like some it looks is a little more you know a little more educated. You know here it looks more like you know a, you know crayon painted, right? You know so that's at least. And it doesn't fit, this one doesn't fit in a template. You can look at it, right? There's no template that really fits this, right? It's, you know. So 
talk, there is of course a paper by Korn and al that, 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 that try to make this like, that try to write an algorithm that does this, right? So there's like, you know, basically you can take any arbitrary color, color, you can take any arbitrary histogram and convert it to, to a, to a, to a, to a harmonic color play, a color, color template. So all you really need to find out, you don't have a lot of time left. All you really need to find out, take the present histogram and find a color template that matches it best. Okay, so number one, find out just by angles, just find out what the angles are and what the empty angles are and find an angle distribution in the template that fits, that fits this best. It probably doesn't fit it perfectly. So you'll have to, have to take some of those colors and, and jam it in there, right? And this is what this equation does. Basically find first, find the right template, find the angle in which it's oriented, right? And then try to optimize, try to fit these things that are still not inside the template and make them go inside, right? To basically compress it into, into that, that, that overlap, into that region, okay? By this optimization procedure. Basically just try to make room for it, right? But whatever, whatever cover is in there, compress it more and try to fit try to fit what's not in there yet into it, right? And then you, this is the non-harmonic and this is the harmonic, right? You can see this greenish pattern became yellow, right? And then, you know, the blue became, the light blue became more blue. This was here, right? So it, it preserves the contrast the, or distinctiveness, but it, 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 it adds, but it makes it more harmonic, right? There's still, it's, it's not as different anymore than it was before, but, but still is somewhat different, right? This is a little bit less different than it was before, but but you know, but but somewhat different, right? And sometimes it changed the color very rapidly, right? This purple here became like brown now, right? So it's very different, right? It used to be out here, the purple was out here, and it completely took it and put it into the brown, in the yellowish brown region. Okay, you know, so that it can change the color, but it it, it does it, right? So you know, breakup makes breaks up Korean region into disjointly colored regions. Okay, so this this is basically what will happen. Okay, so here's another example, you know, that, that shows like, here's this, this blue here, this, man, this, this third panel here, this blue head uh, um, silhouette has become like reddish, right? You know, so the problem with that is, and that actually is the paper that we wrote later on with my student, uh, Lu Jin Bang in 2008, where this, the one downside of this method by Cohen et al was in 2006, SIGGRAPH 2006, was, that it tried to do everything in 2D, right? Try to do everything in this in this two-dimensional color map, you know, that is just on one luminance level, right? On one intensity level. Okay. So, but remember what we talked about the rainbow color map, right? That there's some color contrasts that are not well resolved. And and indeed, really, you know, this red is really hard to distinguish from the background, right? So what we did in this other work that we did here, and I'll show you here is we not only used, I don't have a good example for it here, but we not only used, changed the, the, the U of it, but we also changed accordingly the luminance, okay? We made actually things are more, 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 um, I don't have an example. I should probably put an example of this. We took this and changed the luminance too, and then basically made, restored the perceptual difference between the background and the foreground, right? It's all about perceptual difference, right? You, you can use the U, colorization, you know, but you can also increase or decrease intensity to make it perceptually more and more different, right? And you can just use lightness for that, right? Increase or decrease lightness to make it pop out more or less, right? We, I should put it, I should add an example for this, but I didn't put this here. So these are kind of things we did in our method, right? So this, we took this one here, this is a volume rendering and, and, and made it use different kind of harmonic color templates for, for this. This came out in the visualization conference volume graphics maybe forget where it came out so this is a paper we wrote basically extended to 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 volume rendering okay and then and then the way the the way the things get 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 uh, composite together as the ray goes through it right it creates like interesting colors right and they clean up on that and then also use this intensity based uh, regularization where you try to add con add contrast back in by changing the intensity as well, not just the U as well, not only changing the U. 
So this is really my last slide here of this presentation. Um, like HSV. So this 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 is an HSV basically. This is an HSV template. Okay, this is an HSV template. But this is really just H and S. The V is not there, right? So we added a V to it. Okay, the V is basically the cone, right? This just happens in a in a in a ring. Like and now we try to add the, the, the depth that the cone with it, right? That the V value as well, and try to whatever whenever there was no whenever we so we, we used actually no HSV template, we used the LUV template, right? Which is more perceptual, right? We used the LUV space and went figured out how the colors how the differences are in the LUV space, which is which is which is a more perceptual, right? Differences really matter in terms of the perception. And then when when the, we ran out of space in the in the in the plane, we went we went into the depth, right? We went into the L in the L area where we tried to create a recreate the contrast in the in the lightness. So that's basically what this is. So so this this lecture just tried to explain you like how you can make infographics effectively, you know, give you some design rules that you can use to make infographics, give you some some things to think about, you know, where, how you, what tasks, first find out what the burning question is, then find out what you want to use, what, what kind of data you want to show to solve the burning, to address the burning question. Okay, you can use, you can use some data analysis, right, you can find some interesting correlations, and find some interesting relationships, data analysis that may relate to this particular variable that you want to explain, right? So you can use correlation analysis, you can use cause analysis, all kinds of ways that, that can explain these kind of, that the kind of thing that you want to show. Then find ways that, that you want to use, comparison, is it for the comparison, is it trends, is it time varying data or not, right? Is it a comparative chart? Is it more of a value chart? Then, then make use of these pictograms and big text and small text and then compile charts and pie charts, very primitive things, and then enhance and bring out numbers really big that you can see it, right? So, and then find out, then, then have all these individual facets, you know, and then put them into a big layout that, that organizes it in certain ways and figure out is it more like, just facts that you want to show, then you can use this sort of array type visual array type layout. Is it more like a contrast left and right? Is it is the guiding thing? You know, use like columns. Figure out how you want to like how you want to present your information. Right, very important. Then you know, it depends on the layout of the grid. And then and then once you have this, try to accentuate a few things. You know, by by adding color to it, group things together and so on, right? And then think a little bit more harmonic colors that you're using, right? If you have used more colors, if you use, you know, try to find out if they're harmonic or not. If you, especially if you use something like more complex like this, right? And then then you should come up with a pretty, you, you should be able to come up with a pretty good uh, inf infographics, okay? 